The idea came from uh, conservation biologists from all over the world. We saw that uh, where new roads are being uh, developed and expand, the road network expands, uh, it's the same places that we lose forest and biodiversity with it, so it's so valuable, so important for all of our services. So the idea was that if we can, uh, if we would know more about the existing roadless areas, then we can start providing tools for their protection. We could start putting the roadlessness into the international uh, debate, environmental debate, make it part of the international environmental debate, make new instruments for the international policy makers in order to protect biodiversity, forest and indigenous people's rights. Why are the roads so damaging? Because if we were to be in a protected area or in our uh, primal forest or inside the Amazon and uh, we were to connect two places, if we were to make a, a, a railway or if we were to make uh, to use the the river uh, roads and uh, with the boat communication or small uh, small scale uh, local airports uh, then no one would be able to diverge from these uh, itineraries whereas if you have a road uh, access to a place, then anyone can illegally take a bulldozer, open another road, or semi-legally, in semi-legally ways, new roads can, can open. What happens then is that you start having a, a spider net effect of this initial road being uh, just give, has given the access uh, not only to the specific part of the forest or of, of the area that was initially affected, but to all the area around it. And it just continues to expand. That's why we say that it's not about having uh, areas without, the, without access. It's the roads that make the difference. If you want to connect two places uh, within an important, biodiversity important area, find another way, avoid roads. It will make such a big difference. And if you want to protect an area, just by not building a road there, you, have, you can save so much money from uh, gardening this area in order to be protected, and you can have uh, such a greater effectiveness uh, for its protection that you otherwise wouldn't. So that's interesting that a railway, for example, which you would think would be kind of similar to a road, doesn't have anywhere near the same impact. No, exactly, because the railway, it's not that a, a, someone, a farmer or an illegal logger or a poor illegal, someone that does illegal poaching can go and expand the railway. It's set, it's a public, publicly controlled infrastructure, it's a clearly managed infrastructure. Where's the roads? It's, it's not the road that you open inside an area, it's you give access to uh, all these, uh, to all sorts of vehicles that then can diverge from this road and go to all, the, all other parts of this area. And thus the human pressure to an area once the road is open is uncontrollable. And if you want to control it, it needs a lot, a lot of uh, uh, money for surveillance and a, a very complicated system of, uh, of uh, uh, let's say, legislative infrastructure. Uh, regulation and which will have low efficiency. What are you hoping this initiative will actually do? Well, we started now along with uh, Google and the European Environmental Agency. We already have two interactive maps of the world's uh, roadless areas. So once we had the, the excuse that we didn't know where these areas were, we didn't know the scale of the remaining groundlessness around the world. Now we do know it, we have no excuse. Uh, it's for policy makers now to move ahead and use of these, uh, of these interactive maps, uh, make them tools for the protection of uh, both the biodiversity and, pro and the property rights of indigenous people and make them make no roads a road to the green economy. And I think this is very important for this conference, the Rio Plus 20 conference. The next steps will be 
uh, to bring more people on this uh, idea, on board, and of course, hopefully, uh, make it an item in, uh, in one of the following international decisions. Yeah, and, and when you say you've launched this last week, you've launched the map so that everyone can go and look at them, is that right? Exactly. Everyone that uses the Google Maps uh, or uh, Eye on Earth, that is uh, another tool uh, where European Environment Agency is heavily involved, uh, can have access now to this information. So it is uh, information for all of us, uh, for not only the policymakers, but all the stakeholders, all the citizens, and all the final users of the ecosystem services of this these so great, beautiful and important areas and uh, which is actually all the 8 million, 7 and more million people around the globe. So we have now the two and uh, we're going to continue being, being bringing on board uh, local communities, local authorities and governments in order to start making uh, roadlessness a policy option, a policy tool for protection of uh, both biodiversity, custom services, indigenous people's rights, and as we said before, no roads, let's make no roads a road for the green economy. It's important to say that it's not only the forest that we are protecting. I mentioned before indigenous uh, people's rights. It's uh, often the case that these roads are uh, built without the permission of uh, those that have the property rights, which are the indigenous people in this forest. So nobody could say no if an indigenous community wants a road in this area. But of course, uh, we have to respect the rights of indigenous communities that do not want uh, a road in their area. And this is often the case that it was recently in uh, Bolivia and it has been many times in, um, uh, in the Amazon, on, on the various uh, states uh, of the Amazon and uh, in many other parts of the world. I'm sure that there are cases where there are rural communities who would argue that having a road would greatly increase their would greatly increase. Would increase their economic opportunity if they have better access to markets. And it's the right to build so, to build one. Uh, it's, this idea is not against uh, the right of people to choose how they should go about. Uh, what we are putting on, forth in the international debate is that if you do want to protect an area, if you believe that it's, it's, it's highly important for the global uh, public goods, so for the national public goods and ecosystem services, that this area is protected, the ecosystem services are protected, do think of keeping it roadless. And if the local, uh, if the local communities agree, do keep it roadless. It will be greatly beneficial. Find other ways to connect people. Go for public infrastructure, which is, by the way, uh, less harmful for the climate change also. Go for uh, the train infrastructure, for railways. Uh, use the, the sea roads that are available. Uh, avoid making this, opening this uh, spider net of roads, which is very difficult to control, uh, very difficult to regulate and achieve protection once the road is, is built. Anything else you wanted to add about Rio Plus 20? Um, I think that uh, the idea of, of roadliness and the presentation for the first time in, 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 uh, in the in history of two interactive maps, one uh, from a, a global private institution and one from a global public institution of uh, two different maps of roadlessness, uh, it's, it's, one of the, it's a first step towards protecting roadless areas and uh, I really hope that one day we will achieve a better, a better protection of roadless areas and Rio Plus 20 will be remembered even for this.